Hello everyone, I hope you are well. Uh, so this is a very my very first tutorial on this channel and it's gonna be on Godot and how to create uh, trails for your game. Uh, so either you want to add it to player character or to your mouse, whatever. So we're gonna go to 2D mode and create a new no 2D scene, a uh, new no 2D. Rename that to cursor underscore trail, and basically uh, we want that cursor trail uh, node to follow the cursor, the mouse cursor. So I'm gonna just for demonstration add a sprite child to it. I'm gonna name that uh, test sprite, and uh, basically set the texture of that sprite to uh, to icon .png that you find on on your uh, on your uh, Godot project. Um, so yeah, uh, don't forget to save your uh, scene, of course. So let's let's begin scripting. Let's add a new script to the cursor trail. Uh, name it cursor trail simply. Uh, let's hit create. And the very first thing I'm gonna do, just get rid of all those comments there. Uh, we're gonna need the ready function and the process function here. So the very first thing we wanna do is set the input mode of the mouse into hidden. We don't want to see the mouse cursor. So input dot set underscore mouse mode uh, to uh, uh, basically input. It's going to be input dot mouse mode hidden. Mouse mode hidden. Uh, so once you've done that, uh, next what you want what we, what we want to do is uh, basically make this sprite follow the cursor. So we're going to go to the process function, and we're going to set the global position to the get mouse get global mouse position that's very simple so global position equals get underscore mouse underscore underscore global mouse position so let's go ahead and see what that looks like now so as you can see here uh, the sprite is uh, following the mouse so yeah let's now get rid of the test sprite because well, after all, we just used it for uh, for demonstration purposes. So now what we know is that the cursor trail node is following the cursor, the mouse cursor. Let's go ahead and add a line 2D node to the cursor trail. And um, you get all these properties, the width, the width curve, etc. We'll get back to that later. Now let's create a new script for our line 2D. Let's name it uh, trail dot gd and uh, let's rename our node to trail well basically now what we want to do is um, we want to have two variables first variable is the length of the of the trail I'm gonna set that to 5 you can set that to whatever number you want uh, and we need a second variable that's gonna be the point I'm gonna set it to uh, vector 2 uh, zero zero so initialize it to zero zero position next um, we don't need really we don't really need the ready function let's get rid of it and in the process function in the process function let's go ahead and create the process function and um, so in the process function what we want to do is we're gonna set the global position of the trail node to vector zero zero and the reason behind that is that uh, vec the trail already has uh, the cursor trail position. So if you were to set the global position to a different thing than the zero zero vector, uh, you're gonna basically have an offset and we do not ha want any positional or um, transform offset. Uh, so yeah, because the, the position of this node is um, determined uh, inside the cursor trail node so uh, yeah so it's relative to it 
And uh, so the same thing goes for the global rotation. We do not want any global rotation offset. So we're gonna set that as well to zero. <laughs> So yeah, and basically that that's gonna set uh, the position of the trail uh, node or the two line two D node uh, to be exactly the same as the cursor trail node, which is the the mouse position, right? Next, we're gonna go ahead and and, initialize and give our point uh, a value. So it's gonna be the get parent dot uh, global, dot global position basically so because because we, we needed to follow the cursor trail next we're gonna go ahead and add a point and let's go let's go ahead and look and see what what it looks like so uh, basically it just draws infinite lines uh, because it keeps on adding a point to the line every frame we do not want to do that. That's exactly why we have uh, a length variable, right? So let's go ahead and we're gonna start deleting uh, deleting points as they get as the length gets larger than the length variable. Uh, for that, I use the while function. So while get point count, which returns the count of uh, points in the line, is superior to the length. We're basically gonna remove the first uh, the first point. So remove underscore point of zero. All right. So uh, once you've done that, let's go ahead and basically take a look at what that looks like again. Um, yeah. So there you go. Uh, so yeah, that looks more like what what you expect it to be but still it looks ugly it's very ugly so we're gonna play around with the properties of the line 2d a little bit in order to make it look a little a little better um, so let's go ahead and open it in the inspector and what you can see here is that you have all these properties the default color the width the width curve etc so and the fill the capping Let's go ahead and I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and set the end cap mode to uh, round, and I'm gonna have a width curve that starts at uh, at 0 0.5 and ends at at 1.0. Uh, so basically, that's gonna make the end of the line uh, smaller than the the line. The, the let's go. Let's just look look at what it looks like. So there you go, uh, it looks like a beam or a laser beam or something like that of the sorts. Uh, in my opinion that looks better, but we could do better than that. Let's let's go ahead and uh, modify even more properties and play around with the color a little bit. Uh, so basically any fill color you set for uh, the line is going to override the default color. Let's create a new gradient. Let's set the leftmost uh, value to a value that's close to the background color. Here it's uh, gray, it's uh, nearly 91 R RGB. Um, and I'm gonna set the, uh, the, and, uh, the cursor to, to green. So yeah, now, now it's, gonna, it's gonna look greenish. Let's take a look at that. There you go. So yeah, that looks that that looks cooler, I guess. If you add it to your character, to your to a moving car in 2D mode, like top down or something like that, I'm pretty sure it's gonna look dope. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's basically it for this tutorial. I hope you found it um, interesting. Um, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next tutorial.